but I would I still am very high on him and would have him back into the first right now. Uh, yeah, I, I think that the question that like is really at the core of that idea is does is there something about that program's player development and how they teach scheme that has to be unlearned? And I think like that's a really important question, also one that like we kind of don't have an answer to without having like, an exact layout of what happens there. Um, mm. it, it, I know that sounds like a cop out. I just like I I think there is something to that idea that like certain that every college program has its individual things that it like teaches really well that it probably like, other things that translate really poorly to the NBA. Um, in, in how they teach, you know, whether it's a skill to be unlearned or an angle to to be adjusted or whatever. Um, I don't think that Deuce fits in because I think Deuce can shoot. And I, I buy the shooting and, and that's a good tiebreaker. But I think that that idea is one that I'm really uh, trying to explore more in the next year. Will, you said you had a, a, a thought to get us out on, on Deuce. Yeah, I mean, you guys kind of touched on it, but just like watching through that game again, it just like his offensive decision making is just like, I don't know. It just seems like he pre-plans kind of everything he does. Like when he was posting up there on that smaller player, he was like, all right, I'm going to go into the post and I'm going to take a shot. Or like he kind of just decides like, all right, I'm going to take a pull up now. Or like even that first clip where he was dribbling, he's like, all right, I'm going to try to make this post entry pass. And I'm just going to kind of stare it down and wait for it to happen. So, yeah, I mean, I also like, to me and like that combined with his inability to get downhill consistently just makes like the the sales pitch for him as like a lead guard type guy um i don't know i just don't see that i also kind of view him more as like a smaller wing off guard type i one one thing real quick i mean i think with west virginia guys for me it's more worrying about them offensively than defensively um you know as far as just you know having a ton of creation and you know creativity off the bounce and kind of seeing angles and and seeing you know plays before they develop you know i can't really remember west virginia player that that really stood out in that sense to me but defensively you know just just chesting up with the defender cutting off his driving lane um, you know, staying connected uh, on on the actual shot attempt as far as closing that space and getting a good contest. I think a lot of that stuff is transferable. Um, and it's, you know, something that, you know, you don't play for Bob Hunt, you don't play hard on that end. And I think that that defensive mindset being ingrained in you is, is only a good thing going forward. Okay, well, thank you, Mark. Um, shall we move on to Darren Sharp? Oh, yeah. All right. So what are the five general evaluation points for Daron Sharp? So, I mean, the, the thing that sticks out, you know, at, at, the, shoot, at the shoot at the high school and at the college level is just how hard he plays, you know, with the, the intensity, with, you know, the joy that he plays with, too. He's a good teammate. And I think people really feed off his energy when he gets in the game runs end to end, um, you know, sometimes his closeouts are too hard just because of how intense he is. Um, but I think that that motors is going to really carry him forward at the next level. Um, he rebounds the ball at a high level. You know, you don't really play at UNC if you're not able to do that. I think it was, he averaged, I think it was three and change offensive rebounds a game. I have to check, um, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it was between three and four. Uh, led led that team in offensive rebounding. Of course, there's a lot of rebounds to get. We weren't a great shooting team last year, but um, he he goes after the boards hard. Um, he really throws his body into the defender and isn't afraid to box out. Um, next thing is you know just a strong frame and the athleticism. Um, you know just chiseled. Um, and he's dropped. I think it was 26 pounds since the end of the college season. So he's a lot leaner now. Um, I don't think side to side laterally he moves well, but I think his footwork on the on the block is really good. Um, so that's another one. Just kind of is is post footwork and it doesn't doesn't get his feet crossed very often. Um, is pretty smooth in getting to spins and drop steps on the block. Um, and then defensively, you know the negatives as far as he gets caught ball watching uh, quite a bit. 
um, out of position sometimes in pick and roll coverages. As far as when he gets back, he he allows his offensive guy to get, you know, inside position on him. Uh, getting into the position for, you know, a, a catch on the feed from the perimeter, or you know, inside position where you know a a, a, a shot attempt is a really high percentage you know, look for the offense, you know, or it's, you know, a, a foul for the defense for, for him because he's out of position. And he just doesn't play great defensively in space when he gets caught on an island with the guard. Um, th- like I said, I think he's kind of stiff moving side to side, um, although the footwork in the post is good. Uh, I think it's it's something that he's definitely going to have to work on because, you know, teams are going to put him in pick and rolls. You know, we've seen the last – probably the last four or five years in the NBA finals, there's been a lot of, you know, targeting, you know, NBA offenses are pretty much just let's find the slowest guy on the floor, the worst defender, and let's put him in a pick and roll. Um, Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't think he's, you know, I think eventually he's going to be solid in those situations, but right now that's not a strength of his for sure. Yeah. Um, I think that's a, that's a good wrap up of why he's really interesting and why his year kind of like had him bounce all over the draft board. Um, Yeah. Saw him as high as like twelve at one point. Uh, and I've seen him as low as like not drafted. Now, I did throw in a couple extra just because I had this game sitting on a hard drive. I got you. No worries. Um, you want me to narrate? You want to narrate? How would you like to handle this one? You can narrate this one because okay. it doesn't. Yeah, I think this one. I think he just got caught. Digging yeah, he just hard. digs so hard. Uh, yeah. It's not just that he digs; it's that he digs like with full. He he fully commits to every dig, and he can also <laughs> like lose sight of his man. So like, if they swing it back to his original dude, he has no idea where they are. Like was what Adam was talking about, where he turns his entire back to yeah. to his guy. I mean, he's he does a complete, you know, one eighty and is fully looking at the paint and on this clip. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I mean, that's that's just something that, you know, needs to be kind of worked out of him. Um, I, I think it's something that, you know, he shows pretty well there, um, you know, and is, is up in his business and makes it kind of hard. But, yeah, that dig is is way too deep. And when it gets to the NBA, you're not going to be lucky on those. You know, those are going to be kickouts for threes to open shooters, and, and then you're getting benched. You know, so that's, that's a good one to point out. Can I ask you guys a question about unnecessary switches? Mm-hmm. Do you think do you think that one was necessary or unnecessary, and how much does that really bother you or or stand out to you in evaluation? I don't think it was that unnecessary on that clip. Um, I think it worked out pretty well for them. Um, I'm pretty sure he communicated that one pretty early too. Um, shows well uh, and, and cut off the driving lane, makes him pick up the ball. So I mean. I think it's more, it would be more of a detriment if, if there was a big positional size difference there, but you know, the two guys involved in the switch are roughly the same height. And one's just a shooter and one's more of a post guy. I, the soft switches drive me nuts um, <laughs> personally, uh, especially if it's a soft switch, like without a trigger, like, you know, if it's, if it's moving towards an action or you feel like there's, there's a secondary action tacked on top. I just don't like soft switching for soft switching sake. Um, I, I feel like it doesn't accomplish that much, and oftentimes it makes the next rotation like really messy. So this one, I think, eventually ends up uh, in good footwork on a spin on this mm-hmm. catch once it gets swung to the wing. He goes. The other thing that I like is he goes right into his move. He doesn't wait a second, you know, to to you know let the let the defense get caught up he goes right into it and spins right off of the guy you know creates contact with his shoulder and elbows you know on the spin um he he just goes to it right away and doesn't really let the defense decide which side of his body they want to they want to post up on defensively and, and and try to shut down um i thought it was interesting that they gave him that <laughs> the baseline angle cuz that's just an easy bucket for a right-handed you know big mm-hmm. um he yeah, he him. he loves this baseline spin. Yeah, yeah. And he's not even really working that hard to get great position. You know, they just kind of gave it to him. So I, I'm not not too high in that defensive uh, possession there for Notre Dame. Yeah, um, it, you'll, we'll see him hit this move like ten different times in this, in this series. <laughs> So this one just kind of t- speaks to like the the finishing ability, you know, just kind of the touch around the basket. 
Um, you know, sometimes, you know, on the post hooks or on like the little short floaters that, that, that he tries to do, the touch isn't there. It's off by a little bit. And he misses three shots here. I mean, this one should be more of a, you know, he should be getting his butt into the, to the defender um, mm -hmm. and creating more space for this putback to give himself a better angle here. He did get fouled there. It was not called. But, uh, you know, I think this also speaks kind of to his rebounding motor. Um, and he's going to continue to 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 fight on that possession to find it. This one is for all of the uh, all of the Dayron cannot shoot haters. I'm not I'm not huge on his jump shot. I think eventually he's going to have it, you know, out to 15 to 18 feet that that he can hit it, you know, at a decent clip. Um, but you know the the form is 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 super high. You know he releases it really high. But I mean, this is really fluid as far as you know. He gets straight into it and and lets it go right away. There really isn't any hesitation. So I, I think it kind of speaks to the confidence that he has for it. His pre-draft interview, he was really talking about how he feels really confident in his jump shot and he's gonna be shooting threes. I don't really buy that, but you know, this is just a fluid catch and sh catch and shoot look that you know splashes pretty well through the net. I'm sure PD has some micro skills breakdown he's about to hit us with. Oh, uh, it's just that he changed his temper in North Carolina. <laughs> is that like, it? Yeah, I mean, to me, that I I loved his jumper uh, yeah. at Mont at Mont Verde, mm. and I didn't like the changes that were made in North Carolina. Uh, <laughs> and in pre draft, he's shooting with the jumper he had in high school. Really? Uh, yeah. Good. Just went back to the old form. I didn't I didn't see him shoot many jumpers. I saw him play two or three times in high school, and I saw him play at NBA Top One Hundred camp. A lot of his buckets were that you know baseline spin or drop step or you know a dunk. wasn't a, a ton of shot attempts from what I remember. Yeah, I think they made it a little bit more of a two motion than, than it was previously. Mm -hmm. It just it it, did, it it still has some like fluidity, but he yeah. clearly uh, it it's clearly a change that like wasn't entirely comfortable, and I think limited his range a little bit in college. Yep. So this one is is just another situation where he's digging way too deep, you know, completely turning his hips to to have his back facing to to his matchup. That is not a good look at the NBA level. You know, he, he doesn't even have to be a Steph Curry shooter. You know, if this is just a mid level three point shooter, I mean, that's a problem. You know, he he works hard to get out to contest it, um, but I don't really think he got a tough tough contest so you know that that's going to be a weakness going forward and an issue going forward at the nba level i think yeah that's certainly a uh, a concern um uh before we continue uh adam can you give your plugs uh real quick since it, since it seems like you're headed out sure yeah no, i appreciate that um you can find me on Twitter at Spinella14 or at the box and one underscore. That's going to be where a little bit more draft stuff is on my end. And then YouTube channel is probably the most uh, frequent place you can find draft content on there. Just search Adam Spinella. But again, PD, thank you for setting this up and everybody for allowing me to uh, join in the discourse. Of course. I mean, and uh, anybody who's on their way out, just, just uh, either shoot me a text in a group chat or whatever, and we will get you your plugs. Uh, thank you, everybody, for your patience. Thank you for for understanding. Uh, I'm so glad that you were here and, and talking some some Jared Butler with us. It, it really makes me happy to to have these group summits and and something we can hopefully continue to do going forward. Appreciate you. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. All right. With that being said, let's jump into our boy developing future shooter, Aaron. <laughs> So this one is just, you know, a rebound block out. Um, you know, I think his his passing ability is uh can we go back to that clip real quick? Yeah. Or, this is ahead of it. Okay. All right, cool. We're good. So just, you know, he he sprints to get to his spot um down the floor. Um after we watch them botch this dribble handoff. Runs the floor really hard, you know, for a big. Um kicks it out to the perimeter blocks out pretty hard gets this rebound and another quick decision uh i think there was way too much zip on that pass probably would have been better mm -hmm. as a bounce pass but you know just the, just the the mentality to to be looking up in that situation and looking at the opposite block for for mondo for the for the easy bunny at the rim mm -hmm. um i think his his passing vision is it's it's something that he takes pride in something that he's looking to do and that goes back to what i was saying about him being a good teammate um you know not forcing up a shot in that situation is good you know finding an open look for a shooter uh kerwin walton i believe there 
you know, tracks the rebound and then hits right away to, to Mondo, who has the, the position there. Um, anything to add, PD? No, I mean, I think you're, you're directly on it. Cool. I don't know. I, I guess I had a little question for you guys, but just like watching some of the North Carolina games, um, you know, obviously they kind of always have two bigs on the floor. And it seems like he has like a lot of great moments as a passer, but it's mostly like, just like high low stuff and like making reads from the post. So do you think like going forward, once he gets out of that UNC system, there's going to be a little, a little bit more, I don't know, like kind of like this, like putting it on the deck a little bit for a couple dribbles and then like kicking it out or nah. know, making reads on the short roll. Or... Nah, I, I don't, I don't see him making a ton of great passes uh, off the bounce. Um, but the, the thing that I do like, I, I, I can't remember if we had one from this game, but when he catches in the post, especially when the double's coming, he does a great job of looking opposite for the opposite wing um, and, and, and hitting that guy for, for a pass. That's a read that I like, you know, finding, you know, when, when he catches a little bit more, uh, you know, away from the block kind of in the short corner, uh, he's looking for cutters, um, stuff like that. So I think more of the stationary passing and just passing out of the point, uh, out of the post rather is, is something that I like. Um, but yeah, I, I do not see him doing off the dribble. Uh, no, no Draymond action from him. Uh, yeah, I, I do. Um, I mm. really high on, on the mob bird sample and like the pathways it showed where that is possible. Like, I don't think it's going to get to that level just cause like very few bigs get to the Draymond level of passing. But like, I think that that's something that I would immediately put him in those situations and just see how he reacts to like, uh, short roll, he's at the three-point line. He has a a three-on-two and the defense is sagging. Like, will he shoot that? That's mm-hmm. something I'd be fascinated to find out, like, at a G League level or, you know, at, at whatever small minutes he plays if it's in the NBA. Or otherwise, I'm very, uh, I'm very curious to see how he reacts to those situations, and I think it's essential for his rookie development to put him in those spots. Mm-hmm. You see it one more time in this next possession, I believe. You can skip this one. There we go. Sometimes I just yeah, hit backwards and uh, don't know exactly where I am. So I was, you know. Uh, so yeah, it was, we just went over this place. So just yeah. skip forward a little bit. Yeah, it's the end of it. Whoa. I mean, I'm fine with watching Dayron Dimes. We're, we're totally okay with that. So this one is uh, the he didn't really cut off the defender you know great going to the basket um moved okay side to side to the rim um let me watch it one more time this is a pd edition yeah this is just him i I think that he wants to be a perimeter defender more than he is one right now like you can see that he's he is attacking this as though he, with the same mentality we saw Deuce do, where he's like, he's trying to climb in the handle, he's probing for steals, and it's just like, if you're doing this and not being aggressive, you've won. And then he gets a little too aggressive with his foot placement, loses the corner, and it's a finish. Like, to me, there is interesting mobility. Like, he gets a miss, but like, it's the idea that he wants to sit down. Yeah. <laughs> and not like sit down in like the, the cheesy big man way where you're like, I'm here, man. It's like, no, he's like yeah. trying to do the right technique. He just loses the, the edge a little bit. I think I think with him he's a little bit too straight up defensively as well, um, and yeah. I don't know that his core strength kind of lends him to be able to catch up to shots and stuff like that uh, in that situation. Can you rebound? Uh, rewind to the last one. Sorry. I can rebound to the last one. <laughs> rebound at a high percentage. We're watching. We're watching Carolina, so it works. Yep. All right, so he shows here, crashes the boards pretty well, uh, rebounds, and then right away is a flip to to Walker Kessler for a bucket. Um, that one, I'm, I'm fine with the chest pass. You know, I think he even passed it before he landed on that one. So kind of mm-hmm. shows his ability to pass there. Um, that one, it wasn't as much that, you know, most of the time there isn't help from the corner. It's mm-hmm. normally the, the, the help side comes from the other block. Um, it was more just the fact that he was completely face guarding um, yeah. and had his entire back to the basket and didn't even see the play. That was more of the concern for me. Yeah, he just has moments where, like, like he, he – sort of can waffle between like big responsibilities and guard responsibilities defensively. And I'm just yep. really curious to see how he, like how his defensive usage looks like, cause he's not a straight five. He's like, I mean, to think as much as he wants to be a switch, but he's not right now. And mm-hmm. like, if you're going to be any kind of four, this has to be an automatic rotation. And like, I know I've seen him make these rotations before, but just like, it's difficult to be multi-positional 
defensively because it's the responsibility shift. Like, yeah, you always want to communicate, but like there's different communications at different times for different positions. And that can yep. be difficult when you're trying to become, you know, a little bit of a five, a little bit of a four who can flash them. You know, you're asking a guy to do a lot of things and that's going to lead to, you know, blowouts like this. Yeah. This next one's a, another uh, clip about, you know, not tagging. Um, again, the help responsibility wasn't necessarily his on this one, um, but he doesn't even. Yeah, he's in hard deny, like all the way across the court. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ball moves, he doesn't move. Like, look, there's no angle for this pass to come through. And he is closed shoulder deny starting now. Like, that's a good deny. You know, yeah. he has his hands in the passing lanes. And then on the way up, like, the ball switches sides, and he's still in, like, hard deny as though, like, he's guarding Clay Thompson game point in the summer. <laughs> like, right now, you need to be moving, moving, moving. And he's still, like, by the time the pass is made, he's like, oh, yeah. Right. And it's weird, too, because he doesn't even try to get into this play to contest the shot. I can't stand it when bigs do dig and then they don't even try to contest the shot. It's like, mm -hmm. all right, well, why did you even dig then? Yeah. Um, but he, one, he, but it wasn't ahead. a messy foul, which that's, <laughs> that's my other big, like one of my, my big uh, bugaboos, I guess, is when bigs yeah. swing on things, they have no business and they just pick up fouls. It's like, do you want to play dog? Like, just, <laughs> like don't foul. I'm like, the points were going to go up anyway. Just like stay in the game. And again, yep. good baseline spin. He sells the inside. Uh, the inside move really well. Counter one, immediately. One, one great thing that that you see is that he digs early on this, mm -hmm. but he kind of gives up this position because right here he has him under the rim. Yeah, and yeah. then he allows himself to get pushed out outside of the block, and he's pretty much straight up when he catches that. Yeah, I mean, I like again, I like that he went quickly into the move and he was decisive with it, but you know, I don't understand why he would surrender the 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 low ground when he worked so hard to get that spot. You know. I mean, I guess I guess you could make a pitch that it's like a Pete Newell move to let the big fight you like crazy, and then you know, and then you know on the catch he's going to fight, so you have the spin. Yeah, but yeah, it's also right. like a thing that does happen to him quite a bit is that he has great position and he can hold it for a half a second. But if you're yeah. asking for like deep seals, like the Kofi Coburn seals, where it's like this is now my spot, thank you, <laughs> let's go. He's just like you can put the two points on the board if he catches it. Um, yeah. That's not going to happen with Dayron. He just doesn't have that like level of physicality. But I think that he does have a, a pretty instinctual understanding of of physicality counters, even if they are always to the baseline. Yep. So this one, you can kind of see, you know, he, he's he's in defense, and it, when it starts going the other way, he's behind the the entire play. He's behind the pack. Um, really works hard to get down the floor and get that inside position for that easy entry feed. You see here, he's, he's a couple steps behind. You see this burst. He's getting past his guy, and then he immediately goes into working here to carve out some space, easy inside pass. Mm -hmm. This is what I was looking for in the other one, just the contact with, with his butt, just kind of carving out space you know, for that for that layup. That's that's what I'm looking for more out of him. And I like I liked the pick-and-roll positioning. Like, it was good I mean, for the drop that they were in. He, he gave up middle maybe a little too easy, but it's fine. I mean, I think that so much of him is going to depend on mobility and how he moves. And so, yep. like, a lot of his highlights are him being behind a play and sprinting for his life. You're like, okay, so he has a he has a motor. He wants to move. You know, he can, you know, has... Like, here he almost slides. Like, this would be a fantastic bit of of, uh, of hip mobility. Yeah. If he were able to to sprint down the court and then automatically slide with a college wing. He, he almost does it. And that's... That's encouraging for a lot of the like offensive short roll stuff and things like that, just because like the mobility thresholds required are really high. Yep. So, Will, this is what I was talking about as far as just catching on the block, keeping his eyes up before he goes into his move because he doesn't really feel like he's in good offensive position right there for for a look. He's a little bit far away from the basket, and I don't think he's in the paint when he has it. He has one second to get there. Good find, by the way. Uh, I think that was. You see the, this this guard digs, mm -hmm. looking automatically to the opposite side, finds that guy's matchup, and then hits Caleb Love. Love. Yeah, Caleb Love for the one jump shot he hit all year. <laughs> <laughs> Caleb Love is my guy. I think I think the jumper is going to be significantly improved this year. At least I hope it is. Uh, I think this is a PD edition. Uh, is it? I believe so. I, I think this is uh, this is one of his. Uh... 
No, this is just a, a clip of, of him. Uh, this is this is what I was talking about, just like the motor. He gets thrown on the ground, immediately gets up and is sprinting for his life. A lot of bigs look around for that call or, you know, just like natural human stuff. And then he sprints yep. to the other end, just gives him a little body bump. I just love that. I love that yep. he waited until uh, he waited until the other end instead of lashing out at a guard. Like Jokic does this a lot where he just immediately hits a guy where he's like, I, I'm not I'm not running. <laughs> Let's take my foul here. It is nice. I, I, to me, this is a thing that jumped out on the second viewing of this game, where I was just like, okay, he gets nailed. It's, it's fine. Um, That's it. I think, uh, so I was, I was talking to somebody the other day, I think his success in the NBA is going to kind of be dependent on the, the situation that he's drafted into. Um, he needs to have good shooters around him. He needs to have a point guard that, that can find him. He needs a, a defensive-minded coach that can kind of, teach some of the little details defensively that, that we've kind of highlighted here as far as digging too deep, you know, not, you know, seeing man and ball, you know, positioning. Um, a lot of that, a lot of the small stuff, I think he'll iron out. Um, I mean, my projection for him is to be, you know, uh, a serviceable, uh, you know, four or five, you know, down the line on a pretty good team or just an energy big off the bench. Mm -hmm. Um, I just don't see with his work ethic, with, you know, the, the energy that he plays with um, just it. I mean, it's known in, in the NBA dudes are not trying to box out, you know, dudes are not trying, bigs are not trying to run the floor, you know, like their life dependent on it. And, 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 um, and I think that that's where he can shine initially and then kind of carve out a nice career for himself. Yeah. For me, I'm, I'm probably a little bit higher just cause like he has so many good touch indicators. Like uh, he has these little floaters. He has, you know, he has uh, the 12 footer, regardless of release. Um, he, you know, I've seen him take and make three really confidently with good footwork. And then you combine that with the energy. And it's like, even if this season wasn't the greatest from his like versatility standpoint, he showed enough. It's like, look, if you're high energy, you can knock down jumpers and you have passing touch and you're willing to like talk through difficult defensive assignments, which like playing defense in North Carolina as a big is really hard. Yeah. Um, to me, that's like a dude that I'm willing to gamble on just off like general premise, uh, and I'm and I'm high on him regardless. Um, any uh, any disagreements? Any agreements? How are how is uh, the assembled masses feeling in uh, uh, about this one? Any takeaways, Will? Yeah, I mean. I guess like thinking back to last year and they're, they're kind of different players, but I think they do have some similarities just in terms of being like, uh, I don't know, not like super tall bigs, but guys who are really strong and, uh, really high energy. I think like, I think that someone like Isaiah Stewart, um, and I think like as just processors, um, sharp is just like on a whole nother level, um, just in terms of like, uh, his passing and decision making but like i was someone who was really low on isaiah stewart and i think just watching him in the nba this year like it gives me a little bit more confidence uh in sharp going forward like you know even if they aren't like super tall these like strong um high energy high motor type guys um you know they have a shot at sticking and sharp obviously has like the really cool passing stuff too um so yeah, I think generally I'm fairly in on sharp. I th I think that like if you're just if if you approach if your draft approach is mostly college, I feel like being lower on sharp is really natural because like similar to the West Virginia guys, we've seen the North Carolina bigs kind of have like weird developmental profiles because it's it's uh it can be difficult to suss out like what is context and what is contents here. Um but if you're, you know, looking at the, at the, I think you was CP3 in, in the UIBL and Montford sample, like there's a lot of other things that were present um, that were really encouraging. And I think that if you're viewing the, the youth sample as the norm and the Carolina as the deviation, then you're higher. If you view Carolina as the norm and the youth stuff as the deviation, then you probably like have him as like a second round or UDFA guy. UDFA guy. <laughs> And I, I mean, I think some of the stuff is, is going to have to be drilled out as, uh, on him, out of him in the NBA as far as, you know, how high the, the big show 
on screens. They do really hard hedges. That's not something NBA teams do a ton. It's a lot more drop, drop coverage or switches. Um, so I think that, you know, some of that stuff is going to have to be worked out of him, but, you know, the motor and, you know, the uh, attention to detail re- rebounding is something that Roy will be proud of at the NBA level with they run. Okay. Petey, what is your, what is, I know, you, I know you do not like boards and mock drafts and stuff, but where, what, com- what range would you feel comfortable drafting day run? I mean, to me, it, drafting Dayron is really about find it like having the front court partner that makes the most sense. Like, mm. if you have like, I think Dayron is sort of like to me one of the more fun like Zion fits. Like, obviously, that's not in the draft range, but like this is sort of the profile of guys that you would want near Zion. Who like, mm. and I think f- like he is has enough of the combo forward skills. Um, to like enough of the four, the, the 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 tweener skills between five and four that he can cover for like scoring fours if they can provide enough weak side shot blocking. Because um, mm-hmm. like that's certainly how the Montford system worked, where he would like be this like you know drop and, and place off coverage, and they would just be help over top of like if you really tried to take it up, there was a six foot six to six foot nine wing waiting to time you up and thump your uh, attempt into the backboard. And obviously there's a strength differential from the high school to NBA level, but I think that that's certainly an encouraging data point and one that he wasn't really allowed to show off with how uh, North Carolina constructed its coverages and, and roster generally. Um, but I, I think that, you know, if you have a, a scoring four who probably needs spacing and you maybe you want to use them as more of a bruiser, um, giving Dayron those playmaking abilities, like, I mean, it's a, yeah. a really fun name there, like, uh, I mean, like it. I'm trying to think of other ones that, like, I really love, but I've, I've just attached it to the Pelicans fit now, and I can't come off of it. Um, we got any uh, any other questions, concerns, any uh, any Dayron things that uh, maybe we didn't touch on enough or touch on too much? <laughs> Who would you take between that Montverde team and that UNC team? Uh, no comment. Uh, <laughs> all right i think we're all set we can move on today okay uh will you ready to go yep i'm ready to go all right i'm um, excited to, to talk about your guy somebody that i feel hasn't been discussed enough in this draft cycle so what are the five things that centered your focus on marcus Zagorowski? um I think the first thing is probably just like his shooting ability and his like really, really deep range, both off the dribble and off the catch. Just just like watching Creighton this year was super fun Um, because they had Zegarowski, of course, who's pulling it from anywhere. And then Mitch Ballack, who was kind of just allowed to do whatever he wanted as well. Just take like both of those guys are just like taking shots from everywhere in the half court. Um, pull-ups off movement, stuff like that. So I think that's probably where it starts with him. Um, and then the second thing is probably just like his pace as a ball hand- handler operating in pick and roll. Um, I think Mark wrote a piece on him for Indy Cornrows and almost like he compared him to a boxer, which I thought was a really cool comparison, the way he's sort of just like, he doesn't like attack, but he sort of like probes and like gets to his spots. Um, and, you know, just like having, being able to probe like that, um, it opens up passing windows for him. Um, and I think just like the third thing would be like his passing and decision making in general. Um, he's not someone that, I don't know, gets too sped up. Um, he doesn't make a lot of questionable decisions, uh, just sort of plays within himself, handles traps pretty well. Um, doesn't always try to make like the the home run uh, pass right away, um, which I like about him. Isn't the guy who turns the ball over a lot. Um, and then I think the fourth thing, and this is kind of my, I mean, you, well, I guess we'll get into some of this with the clips later, but like um, his inside scoring ability um, and sort of just hesit- hesitancy to attack the basket, um, get two feet in the paint. Um, 
and then sort of jumping off of that, like Zagorowski is someone who is actually able to to get into the paint a lot. Like I almost compare it to Cassius Winston a little bit, though. I think uh, Zagorowski definitely has more woes as a finisher, but like Zagorowski is capable of getting downhill. It's just he doesn't always like actually. Oh, he just doesn't like always get two two feet in the paint and like. Um, like he'll stop short or something like that, even though he has a clear lane and he'll just miss point play point blank open layups. Um, and then like, just like getting downhill, he does actually draw like plenty of help defenders. There's some clips in here where he like draws multiple guys. Um, but he has this tendency to sort of like get stuck and just because of his size isn't able to like make the appropriate kickout passes. Um, and then the last thing, I mean, just like being a small guard, it's really hard to stand out on defense. Um, I think he's only like 180 pounds or something like that. Uh, I don't think his team defense is anything like, it's not terrible, but it's just so hard to not be a negative at that size, unless you're like a really outlier strength guy. Um, so yeah. All right, let's fire this up. All righty. So, yeah, I think with this first clip, um, it was just looking at his on-ball defense. And I think he just kind of, I don't know if he was, like, anticipating a screen or something, but he kind of just starts this play, like, really upright. Mm -hmm. um, and as a result, he kind of has to turn and switch right away. And when the guy he's defending stops on a dime, he kind of just keeps going. Uh, so yeah, I think, you know, getting in a stance and trying to slide rather than, uh, you know, starting off so upright and turning and switching would uh, be beneficial there. And then this next clip sort of gets out of shooting ability. So uh, yeah, they go over the screen. They're playing in a deep drop. Uh, and, like, you just really can't do that against Zagorowski because he's so quick to pull up, especially, uh, like, going left. Like, they'll give him a screen to his left there, and he'll just take it, you know? Yeah, and there's um, not really a range limit for him. <laughs> yeah, like, he, he will really take it anywhere. Like, this catch-and-shoot clip, um, like, Mamu, like, even gets decent contest on him but like he's just gonna take that you know um yeah. you just can't give him that between much between him space. and Balak, they might have the deepest like catch and finish radius or, or catch and shoot radius of like any two players in this draft or uh, maybe like any two players i've really seen like Balak, yeah. Balak, you can see on this like clip he thinks about shooting this like he like lightly <laughs> catches it he's like yeah i mean i could <laughs> yeah i mean like going back and watching this game like Balak just takes so many just audacious shots. And I think he finished with like 29 points and made a game winner. And I like wanted, I wanted to throw those clips in there, but I didn't, but like, I don't know. Both of those guys are just like incredibly fun to watch. Yeah. Um, um, what do you make of his finishing? I, I don't really know what to make of it. Cause like, I feel like there are moments where he, you know, like does some interesting craft things, but like on the, the play before this, it's like it's in transition and he gets by his man pretty easily. Um, mm -hmm. I think his uh, big man there had uh, the, the Seton Hall rim protector blocked off. And at the same time, like he just kind of stops. Yeah, here it is. Or yeah, the, I rewound it. Yeah. So you'll see like he has a lane to the basket and he just stops with both feet outside the paint. And then like, it's so weird because some of his layup attempts are just like so off, you know, like, I don't know if he was trying to go for a lob there or something, but like, he just kind of, I don't know. It just seems like I just don't think he has so great, I don't think he has great finishing touch. Like, I mean, it, it's weird to say for a guy who, who shoots so well, but like he just seems to struggle with, with placement on, on the rim and placement um, in terms of his body. Like he, even like his lobs just never seem to be perfect. Um, yeah. I just think it's a, it's a comfort thing. And like some guys are, 
I mean, I, I think we tend to think of a shooting and, and passing as like one to one relationships, but like there's guys who are great shooters and are more comfortable throwing cross court passes. There's guys who are more comfortable throwing dump off passes. And he just seems to be a little less comfortable in close range than, than you would expect for, for somebody with a shooting profile. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. Um, I think this, this clip here was another one where like, yeah, so he's sets up his man and I think he kind of struggles to fully get by him. He's not super bursty. Um, and yeah, there's a dig that comes, he picks up his dribble. Um, I think he probably like, if he kept his dribble alive, he could have maybe gotten to his left hand and gotten into that lane there, but he stops. And then, I mean, he makes that shot, but that's just way tougher than it should have been. Yeah. Um, let's see. Yeah. This one, I mean, this one, it's not like obviously perfect defense, but like he jumps a little bit at the end there, but like, it's better than that other play. Like he's in a stance the whole time. He's pretty quick on his feet. Yeah. I worry um, about the happy feet. Like if you watch it, he's just like, he's, he's always moving. And like at times it seems like he's overcorrecting, trying to be like, if you know, because he can, he knows he's a, a little bit of a disadvantage just physically. Um, you can like, there's just, it's what, what is he taking away? What is he giving? You know, it, it's not very fluid and intent driven it, it more seems like a reactive defensive ability versus you know being like okay i'm gonna give up this it, it's understandable let me rewind this for you so you can talk about this uh this this downhill passing yeah so i think like this one you know it's in transition again he gets downhill and he draws three help defenders at the rim mm -hmm. and i think like once he kind of gets in the trees there he like tends to jump and then like he kind of throws this like wild right-handed swing pass and like he's got three guys around him so you know someone's open and that should be an open corner three but like him jumping and then like doing that wild pass gives mamu so much time to recover so it kind of destroys the advantage that he created yeah i also think that like he doesn't have like he has good body control but he's not always stable when like he doesn't have the ability to right himself when he gets out of control like you'll see shay like i mean shay's an, an outlier nba athlete but like shay has an ability to like get outside or you know out in front of his skis to be a little bit off balance and he has the core stability and, and proprioception to correct and find a, an amount of, of balance to make a good decision and i feel like what separates somebody like that and somebody like zay who's like you know a, a good and interesting point guard prospect is like when he gets out of control, like he really has to be able to make the perfect decision every single time because teams can recover easier because he doesn't have that full and freakish ability to stabilize. Yeah. Yeah, what was, uh, let's see. Rip through. Yeah. Two moves. And I think, yeah, that's another one where he draws like four help defenders mm -hmm. um, and he kind of just get stuck you know and i mean the spacing isn't like perfect from creighton on this possession like he had like balak is still kind of there at the rim although he relocates but like i don't know it's it just seems like when he gets downhill so often he kind of just gets stuck it's also a thing that you don't necessarily want to see from older guards like it, it's not that this is a particularly youthful mistake but it's one that you would think that he would have you know, have made enough that he has natural counters. Like he has enough time, you know, with five seconds on the shot clock to hold for a second, make 21 commit. Like, are you going to, are you going to stay close to defend this rim runner or are you going to guard Balak? And if he just holds this spot or is capable of holding this spot for a half second, he, that decision is really clear. And instead he kind of hurries into it. He jumps into four people and, and looks for, you know, a ref to call something or, you know, to, to try to get a, 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 a throw into a needle sized hole. Yeah. I think this next one, um, it just shows like having a guy who has shooting gravity. Um, mm -hmm. So they have to double here and he's just good at like passing out of these traps. Um, you know, he obviously doesn't hit the roll man right away, but he knows like, okay, I can make this pass to the wing and he has a better angle there. Um, yeah. So, you know, just stuff like that, just making good decisions. Um, yeah, and that's that's where like a different like you know not all decisions get come on the same growth curve. Like this is a coverage he's seen a million times in his life now. 
and he gets the big all the way out where they can't really commit. The guard has to kind of block their path to return. And then he passes, hits the pass out. You see, there's like a small interaction between, you know, uh, uh, Mr. Warden's one. See, there's a real blockage for the center, not able to come over in time. Like, that's that's a really high level, you know, um, ability to manipulate defenders. It's just you wanted to see that in a universal, more universal sense for an older guard. Where he can do that just in more specific things where he's leveraging and shooting and not as much inside the, inside the paint. If I can editorialize a little bit. Yeah. And then this and then is I just... Special. Yeah, I mean that one. It's just like you know, sets up the rescreen, little in and out. Um, they're playing a little bit up higher in coverage, and I mean, just you know, that three point shot making is really impressive. I think he was at forty percent like every single year he was in college. Um, yeah. Great balance too. I mean, you can see he's he's in no way out of control shooting off the dribble. Yeah. Uh, this one here, um, a little bit more in, in control when he's getting downhill, comes off the screen, um, is able to attack the, the big with a little hesitation. Yeah. This, this big, uh, if we can, I'm just going to rewind this again. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it has a little bit of a dance moment, you know, um, it's a couple of steps in and then just gets blown by. Yep. And then... I think this last one here, just like more really high level pull up shooting. Um, yeah, um, I think that this is like you've done a really good job of like, I think that there's sort of two ways to go about this. Like I, I, I for the viewers, I gave said, hey, give me 10 to 15 clips on one game. Uh, this should say debate. I, it does not because I made a mistake in editing. Um, and uh, I gave, you know, the, the contributors to today's stream uh, a, a request that they give 10 to 15 clips. And I think there are two camps that you can have for doing this. The first one is, is to laser in on what a player does well. And the other one is to try to give a, a, you know, a circumnavigation of their ability. And I feel like you've done a really good job of explaining exactly why teams will value Marcus Zagorowski while also explaining a little bit of like, yeah, if he's this good, like, why is he not, you know, a, a top 10 pick? It's like, well, there's, there's other stuff. Like if, if, if he had just like a little bit more in a couple different directions, like he's probably a first rounder. I think that's pretty safe to say. Like yeah. If he, if he were able to just like consistent downhill space creation, great decision making um, and, and better physical tools. Like, yeah, that dude's, that dude's going really high. I mean, that's sort of the argument for Jared Butler. Um, but I feel like you did a really good job of explaining like, yes, there's, there's really strong strengths. There's, you know, there's moments of abusing the shooting gravity and then there's moments where the shooting gravity fails to warp a defense inside the arc. Uh, that, that was really well done. I really appreciated that. Um, yeah, thank you. I mean, just like, I, I did want to pick a game where like you can see some of like the appeal and like, I think he made five threes that game or something. And obviously plenty off the dribble because mm -hmm. you know, that's sort of the selling point with him. He can maybe come in off the bench and provide uh, some value as this like combo guard pull up shooter type uh, with really deep range. But like at the same time, you know, I, like he had game, like I think he had a game where against Villanova where he was like getting to the rim all the time and finishing, but like, that's just not, really the norm with him most of the time he's uh stopping short and taking you know or, or i mean yeah stopping stopping with two feet outside the paint and like flipping up really weird layups and uh yeah just kind of getting stuck and uh even though he has some rim gravity not making the correct decisions yeah i think there's there's a lot of interesting there um I don't know who's who's still in here. Um, I don't. Uh, Skype is a very convoluted program. I'll lie to y'all. Um, uh, as is anybody who's who's currently in the room, whether it's from the next shift or, or still hanging out from the last one, have any disagreements about Zag? Have a particular uh, have a particular case to be made for his value, a fit that works out well. Um, I feel like he he's an interesting case that I can see as, as, like some specific spots having real value for him. Well, I have a question as far as like, you know, how successful do you think he's going to be as both a shooter and passer in the pick and roll? Uh, I mean, like, isn't the perfect uh, thing for him, like, 
like sort of like being what Shane Larkin is. I mean, he's not as athletic, but like that's that's the, like the dream. Mm-hmm. So like, is eighty uh, percent of Shane Larkin an NBA rotation player in the playoffs? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not like eighty percent is a reasonable outcome for him. Eighty percent of Shane Larkin isn't like his hundred percent outcome. Like, like there's you can potentially go higher than that. Um, gotcha. If everything goes perfectly, but like you need to have situations where like he can be very, um, you know, like protected defensively. You probably want another playmaker or two next to him where he doesn't have to face an overloaded defense. I mean, like Creighton had really good gravity, but it also like needed him to make it like it, 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 it as much as it, there was gravity off ball with, with Balak and, and uh, the rest of their roster construction. They did ask him to make a, a boatload of decisions. And I don't think that's necessarily going to be true at the NBA level. Um, but he, I think in when he does his gravity is really kicking, he can make decisions at a high level. It's just a matter of, of paring down the volume of those so that he doesn't have to face the, the downsides of his usage curve. Gotcha. Well, well, all right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for, uh, having me on pd that was okay. a lot of fun well um so i'll say this uh the, the the channel is open if you have free time today feel free to come in if you want to be like that's totally wrong this guy can you know switch a pick and roll Abs- at four o'clock and you want to yell at somebody else absolutely do that i would love to have you back at any point during the day that's an open <laughs> consideration for anybody uh, i'll add you to the little chiron scroller and uh um give a give everybody your plugs thank you for for being the first shift uh, the most scary one um, I mean, it'll get loopy later. That's a different type of scary, but uh, you guys really did uh, did great work. Let people know where they can find you, uh, what, what you have coming up. Um, and, and again, I just bring, I appreciate you guys bringing um, your unique perspective to, to this. Uh, yeah, so you can follow me on Twitter at W underscore A underscore Morris. Um, I have done some uh, written work for zonahoops.com this year. Maybe I'll try to get I'm working on like a little board wrap up piece that I'll probably have out either tomorrow or later today. Um, so yeah, you can find my written work there and then uh, feel free to follow me on Twitter. I'm on Twitter uh, at uh, PR0IA because I have to make things complicated for no reason. Uh, a lot of basketball content at the, the college and honestly high school level the prep hoop stuff as well as some nba stuff uh also follow the hoop threats podcast where we also had the uh star of this show uh pd webb on to talk about uh his journey uh my goal for that is really to talk about people within different spaces in the industry you know scouts uh media members coaches uh pretty soon i'll have some parents and players on just to, to hear their journeys and how they got to where they're at to hopefully help the, the next wave of talent develop so definitely check out pd's episode it's definitely worth the 90 minutes you'll spend on it <laughs> thanks for having me on pd welcome I'm, I'm glad to have you guys um so i'm gonna uh throw on the uh the o3 draft i'm gonna fill up another cup of coffee and we will be back with the, the next block in about five minutes. Does that sound good for everybody? All right. Uh, we'll All right. Rest. Thank you, PD. Of course. Thank you so much. And I'll probably see you later. Yeah.